Yeah, so I know um, earlier Tim was mentioning something about, or it might have been paired, um, internal interrupters, right? So natural things like having to use a restroom or um, remembering to send off a certain email. What are some things that you all put in place to help you manage the amount of times that you personally interrupt yourself when you're trying to get into a flow? I think we kind of went the opposite direction. I think what we did is we said that some interruption is inevitable. So if it's going to happen, how do we how do we put a safety in place so that it doesn't become a catastrophe? And I think if you follow the article, um, some of the things, Perry, I'll let you jump in. Um, some of the things we talked about were, of course, um, saving the game. So you know, as you're working, can you externalize your context? Right? Can you write something down? Can you draw a picture? You know, is there is there some some shared diagram or even a to do that you can type in that tells you where you were last and what you were trying to do? We find that helps a lot. Right, and that you know the the thing I found really interesting is that as we we were actually building a little product and um, you know as we began to imagine the feature set uh, rather than creating a traditional um, backlog, a serialized backlog, we use Jeff Patton's uh, story mapping technique. And um, doing that, we were able to visualize the system as, as a whole. So we were able to see the entire product that we were interested in building, both with, you know, the user personas that, you know, we're going to interact with the system as well as decomposing the uh, sort of the, um, user activity backbone into the details that we were going to create and then just through a simple color coding technique we could um, identify the ones that were planned for this next release and then as they began to be worked we would you know we would pick the next thing on the on the map and change the color to uh, to orange to indicate that we were it was in progress and then when it was done we changed it to green and um, you know a lot of times just completing one of the stories would take us multiple days but when we got that finished, we got to a point where it was finished, uh, we could go back to the story and pick up really quite easily and see where we are in uh, delivering this release of functionality, what you know, stories were uh, still pertinent, and we would change the color for the one that we just completed, pick the next one that we wanted to work on. And it was just a, a really nice way to maintain not only the context of the items, like if you imagine on the Kanban board of them coming across, um, but we were able to maintain the, the context of the entire product. And that's really Jeff Patton's point and uh, suggesting a story map be the new backlog that uh, Agile teams use is because um, in the sequential backlog world, it's really hard to see the big picture. And um, if teams ever saw them at all, they're often lost when they translate them into a sequential backlog. Uh, so we that was one of the things I found most effective for us, Tim, was um, every few days we could go back to the story map. And it was just something simple we did in Mural. It wasn't anything sophisticated. But uh, that little bit of, of permanent context that we could go back and keep up to date kept us on track with a vision for delivering something useful. Perry's color code, by the way, was pretty brilliant. He added, um, there's a color for things that we did now as a concierge feature. Those would be gray. And then when it was time to actually go and implement that in code, then it would come down and it would become a new color, you know, in the next release. I think that that was some pretty powerful stuff because so we could look and see, you know, what do we not have to do because it's kind of done? What are we doing? What is yet to be done? And by not doing it in a traditional tracking tool, uh, we didn't have some list to filter and some spreadsheet somewhere. I mean, you just you look at the at the mural, and pop, there it is. Clearly, you know, here's all these yellow things they need to be done. It's really it was a it was a really great way of working. I'm going to continue using that everywhere. I think I would rather use that than any conventional tracking tool. Yeah, I love that. Um, Steve Quo had a great uh, blog post about discovery trees, which sound very similar. Um, and yeah, with the, with the color coding, I found that it was lightweight. It was not 
uh, linear, like you could have, you know, tasks of tasks in a tree. And it just made it, it's so easy just to see. And it gets it all that stuff. We get the bonus of getting it out of our, our brains into a second brain without having the weight and, and restricted view of something like Jira.